Hello my soccer universe. Well, this is not how this weekend was supposed to go. Definitely not. Definitely not. It was supposed that the uh, title contenders are dropping points and Milan are getting three points and continue their run to a Serie A title. But did not go this way. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, I've decided now that uh, while there's a title race, I'm not going to wear the uh, jerseys of the contenders. Uh, sorry for that, but uh, it's a title race. And so I decided to go Roma, Milan. No, not this time around. But yeah, this did not go as I thought it would or should go. And it's the same old, same old, but you know, we'll get to that game. But yeah. To be fair, to be fair, I said this weekend did not go as expected. Yeah, the previous didn't go either, but they went for Milan. So yeah, I mean, uh, Inter dropping points left and right, that was not expected for one uh, little bit. Could have gotten, uh, <laughs> so yeah, in that sense, okay. Uh, in any case, I've been watching actually mostly Serie A this weekend. I actually didn't watch all that much overall, but I've been watching mostly Serie A, but it was all about the top games there. So uh, uh, overall picture, maybe um, we'll look at, at the results, but uh, I'm a little bit lacking maybe on the overall picture because I'm all for this title fight and nervous, as you might expect, because, you know, I... I, I I think I have the feeling that this title could fall into the lap of Milan. However, I'm not sure that they're smart, smart enough to accept this present. Uh, and I also feel, well, uh, at the beginning of the, of the season, title talk should never have happened. Milan were not a title contender at the very, very, very big. Yes, we had a second place finish, okay. But Milan, in a way, everyone kind of knew now they're not really contenders quite yet. But at the moment, it feels like this opportunity to really snatch a title when the, all the others are kind of weak it seems like a weird Serie A season because I have a feeling that next season Juventus will be a whole different beast so it's just this window of op 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 opportunity to get a title and go back even with Inter Anyway, uh, there were there, actually in the top games, there was actually quite a few things to talk about. But um, let's run through the results um, one by one and then we'll take from there. Spezia heaping more travel onto Venezia and kind of saving themselves with a 1-0 win on Saturday. Lazio 2-1 win over Sassuolo. This was kind of, you know, Sassuolo and Lazio, this is right at the edge of teams that will make it into Europe and will not make it in, into Europe. And Sassuolo maybe had too bad of a start for that. Torino also continued their run 1-0 over Salernitana. Um, this Torino side can be really, really dangerous, but it's uh, always give and take. They, all, they always have some uh, wacky results in there as well. Fiorentina win the Tuscan Derby 1-0 over Empoli, and then it was for me all about Atalanta-Napoli. And it, Atalanta played the way I would have expected Atalanta to play. However, again, Atalanta missing uh, too many players. I mean, Duman Zapata was a glaring uh, or miss uh, in that game. And uh, so it was basically Atalanta uh, was pressing, had all the uh, moment going forward, momentum going forward. However, then they give away a penal penalty that Insigne expertly, I mean, it was, it was a foul on... Um, Mertens uh, by, the, by the goal if you see it. So yeah, it was always going to be a penalty, although the, pe the ref uh, initially waved it off. Um, and yeah, Insigne converts the penalty with the first shot on goal. And uh, that's how the game continued. It was Atalanta trying to get something going without having really the big chances and Napoli being clinically. And then uh, Insigne assists Politano, makes it 2-0. And that kind of almost sell sell the game. Yes, Atalanta came back in the second half uh, with a Deron header. Uh, but I never felt, I mean, I was kind of hoping that there will be at least a draw, um, that something is coming, but it never really felt that it will come, to be honest, uh, This because Atalanta just didn't have enough punch, in my opinion, although they really, really, really tried hard. And in, 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 in the end, uh, they're caught out on a counter-attack where uh, Elif Elmas, Lozano and Elmas, who just had come, 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 come out uh, like 10 minutes earlier, combined. And But that goal was all about Kul Kulubeli, who initiated the attack and then with a run going all the way 
binding Atalanta defenders, which uh, allowed Elmas to go, go free and then uh, make it 3-1. Uh, so a pretty impressive um, win for Napoli, I gotta say. Um, playing, of course, in the red Mar Mar Maradona jersey, which is the first time that I think that uh, Maradona jersey is worn twice, so at least something uh, might wa one might say. Um, then uh, Udine, thrashing Cagliari. Um, and Usun is a, is a kind of, kind of a little bit of sleep. I mean, they are, they are, they are, they are not me and me table. Cagliari might still get dragged, in, dragged into the relegation battle. We'll see about that. Um, and then uh, Roma get, you know, get what they need to do. First half goal by Mitarian in 27th and then they hang on to it and I think in the end get a deserved 1-0 uh, win at Sampdoria and continue rag ragging points. I think there's something building there, it's just uh, how well, how high is the level for that Roma team. Juve Inter, by you what a game, what a game. I mean, uh, <laughs> Juve probably was overall the better side. Especially in the first half, you became a storm. You have, have been playing so boring uh, over the last few weeks. Now, this time they say we got to take the game, game to Inter. We really going to uh, um, attack them. Uh, the problem is uh, they couldn't convert. And I actually felt that against this uh, veteran Inter defense, Vlahovic seemed like a small player. Suddenly, he could not, he could not get past them. Uh, which was a uh, kind of stack segment. Then the, I also gotta say, uh, the physicality in this game was just off the charts. I mean, there were more tactics than uh, there, there were more uh, high tactics than shots uh, for many parts of the, of the game. And then uh, the deciding moment was also an absolute moment of madness, where um, uh, it was a stomp. Uh, I, I I don't know who 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 can stomp, uh, stomp down now, but it was a stomp. Uh, on the uh, the Inter player there, but it, it kind of was so innocuous on on the side. But you know, as soon as this goes to VAR, yes, uh, it's gonna, gonna gonna be given. But it was one of one of those where you thought, yeah, during the game it was not really there. Then Chalanoglu steps up. The penalty is saved on the rebound. Chalanoglu converts. However, the referee decides for some reason to give a free kick for Juventus. And that was not quite clear why, but then seemingly the Licht ran uh, early into in the box penalty has has very taken and then John Ogle just buries it, makes it one nil for uh, Inter at the half. As I said, a, a little bit flattering that result uh, in my opinion. Um, it was really nice to see how Chesney and Charles Nogle were discussing that penalty situation in the hallway before the second half. Uh, that was nice. In the second half, Juve tried their damnedest to get a penalty, but so uh, unimaginable. I mean, touch, fall, touch, fall. I mean, players flopping all over the place. There was less play, there was more lying around. First half, brilliant. Second half, yeah. And especially in the second half, suddenly, I mean, every minute, either you would play as lying in the box, claiming that he had been uh, assaulted, or it was an Inter player trying to waste time. It was the not an. It, it was entertaining, especially in the first half. The second half was kind of yeah, this is the worst of uh, of a Serie A in many many ways. And so Inter get a win that I was really hoping that they don't they shouldn't get. So yeah, that heaped on the pressure. Hellas get a win over Genoa, and then what can I tell you about Milan Bologna? Uh, I think the game is best summed up like that. Um, first, it was only a question of time when uh, a goal will be scored. No, let's first. First, it was kind of an even match uh, that was very uh, nervous on both sides. Uh, Milan trying to try to take and uh, uh, Bologna, and especially Anatovic. Um, really dug in and actually created some chances. And of course, Sinisa Mihailovic uh, had been diagnosed again with leukemia. He took it a little bit like Slater. Yeah, le leukemia didn't get enough on the first go around. So uh, let, me be let me beat it thoroughly again, which I guess is the right attitude to take it there. I mean, I really hope that uh, it, 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 it will not get worse. But um, I also have to say that from that moment on, I knew that Bologna is going to play with a chip on their shoulder, for sure. And so it was not an easy game. Um, 
so yeah, uh, the, it, 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 it was even, but for me then it is, uh, especially late in the first and then the entire second half, it was first. When, it's only a matter of time, when Milan will score, then it became if Milan did score and then it, the answer became never. Two other things. Why is Milan again getting a referee that I've never seen before in my life? Uh, it's becoming this Monday evening, so a Milan home games, it's the time, yeah, let's wheel out another referee. Not The referee was actually not that bad, but it just annoys me with all the refereeing decisions that have already begun against Milan. Why do you again do that? Give me at least a chief view or whatever, just someone that I know. That I, and, and, and then we can talk about how good it is, but in a title fight, you don't bring up a, a, an un known referee. Again, the referee, I think, acquitted himself quite well. He let the game run, which at times was a little bit, but over, over I think uh, it was okay, but I, I, I just don't get the, the idea behind it. And especially since with those new referees, Milan never fared well. well at least that, that's my feeling. Maybe the stats don't, don't bear out. And then, of course, we have to talk about that shirt by Milan. I really tried hard to like it because there's something in there. There are the classic red and uh, black stripes and then the white below. This is something that has been missing more or less the entire season. Um, but the splash on the shoulder just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That it's a work work home company. I mean, immediately I thought it, it looks like yeah, a, 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 a Milan jersey uh, that painters were wearing because, you know, with all the white splash here, the white splash here. Yeah, uh, it's made by, uh, kind of in a collaboration with a work work company. So, okay. If you get rid of the white splash on top of the shoulders, I think you're onto something here. But uh, it just looks too weird. And, you know, let me say that uh, paint splashes uh, were the kindest thing I heard about uh, those shoulders to being said. Um, yeah, one off. And of course, this also kind of thing. Yeah, you have a one off special jersey. We better win in that one. Uh, at least it gave, I mean, uh, no, it gave, it didn't look like a Milan church or just something else, a white patch up, up on, on, on the shoulder. If that one, one, one wasn't there, it actually would have looked really Milan-like in many ways. And I would be fine with that. So, yeah. As I said, the game, uh, Milan first too hasty, then too cute. Messias atrocious and then when Rebic came in, he, he didn't uh, provide much improvement. Chances were created. There was a great Giroud header before the uh, before the end of the half. Uh, Mike Mignon also had to make some saves for Bologna. I think uh, about 35, 4, 40 minutes in, you one could have said that Bologna had the better ch ch chances, but Milan they, they, they definitely controlled the game. But the stumbling that Leao did on the field all the time, um, the shots that were taken that went all sky high. Uh, at least Theo is taking shots because sometimes I wonder shoot. For crying out loud, no, they're not. They're finding another pass. When they should shoot, the, uh, so either either they shoot the final pass or they shoot when they should have passed. I mean, it, uh, everything was kind of going wrong. Uh, Ibra then came out for Giroud, which for once I thought, no, nah, do we really need that? Because Giroud, I would back Giroud at the moment to score. He was not happy, uh, for sure. Uh, Ibra actually, uh, in his first action, brought quite some danger. Again, you could not connect, and so yeah, everything goes begging. And then Skorupski, um, the few shots, I mean, there was a, kind of a hidden shot by Leao. There was a long range shot uh, laid on, uh, I think by Benacer was, so, was something like that. But Skorupski is also a pretty good goalkeeper for, ser uh, for, for Serie A. So yeah, it, was, it always needed to be something special. And it never came. And that's frustrating. That's frustrating. Because at this point, you needed to win this game. And I think if you win this game late, I think Milan... Uh, uh, this was one of those games. If you win this late, this gives you enough momentum to carry on forward. I really felt if you win this late, then Milan are title contenders. For sure. And uh, no, not only contenders, favorites. This way, not so much. It was a really frustrating game. I mean, it, 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 it was just nervously, I was just, mm, the, the goal needs to come. It must come for crying Korean out loud. I mean, uh, the moment when Slatan and uh, Medel crashed, butted heads and, you know, with the gashing wound and, and so on, 
I thought, yeah, and that's that. Yes, there will be a time added on, but that's exactly the breather that Bologna needed because up until the point the pressure was relented, Bologna didn't get out of their own half anymore. But at that point, then they got the breather. This was a long enough break. And yeah. And whenever Slater steps on, on the pitch, I'm just expecting to pull his uh, hammy somewhere. Yeah, whatever. Uh, actually, uh, before we go into, into the same, the next round is, I think, a sleep round. Because I think any of the um, three title containers, I mean, Juve, now I think we can safely say is out of the title race with that loss. But any of the title contenders have a really, really nasty point. We have Inter at home to Hellas. Not easy. We have Napoli at home to Fiorentina. Fiorentina has already beaten Napoli uh, away from home. So a uh, classic trap game. And then we have Torino hosting Milan. The one thing is Torino is really, really nasty. The one thing is Torino is a little bit more open than all the other games because Milan has tr uh, troubles break breaking down defenses. Uh, we also have another really sleeper game. It's happening at the same time as Napoli Fiorentina with Sassuolo uh, Atalanta. Uh, this is kind of the um, hipster game in a way. Both teams are not as great this season as they used to be, but I think this is a really, really interesting game uh, as well. Um, as I said, in the standings, uh, we started this uh, round with uh, Milan 45% favorites. Now they're only down to 20% with Inter Napoli 45 and 34 respectively. Yeah, go figure. Uh, it's just flip-flopping still with a point in hand, but you know, Napoli and Inter are more highly rated than Milan. And that's why uh, this one point, it just, and also goal difference. Goal difference is the one thing, although now it might actually not come to it. Always have in mind, Inter have a game in hand, so the table is much, much tighter. It should be 67, 66, 66. That's how I see this whole thing panning out. The good thing is that the other two have tripped up so much that Milan actually is still with this little uh, stumble still up on top but yeah uh, it's not it's not the safest lead let me put it uh, that way um, as well. On the bottom it also kind of seems pretty much decided who will go down I, although it's only three points but Cagliari yes Cagliari got hammered maybe they can, will get dragged in, 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 into it maybe it's a little bit more open now but you know Genoa, Venezia, Salia, Nitana seem like the team's going down and yeah Venezia but okay um, it's a little bit weird uh, the other thing that I had is weird and it's the last thing I want to say uh, that's a little bit big picture uh, suddenly Serie A is losing goals Serie A was a league that consistently had over three goals per game and suddenly we had only a 2.83. What's happening? Something's happening. I think, I mean, uh, last season it was clearly that um, many, many penalty goals were, many, many penalties were awarded and that definitely has gone down. But this is something that I find a little bit of a weird trend and also Atalanta is not go running riot uh, on everyone anymore. But hey. Last thought. Please let me know what you thought about this round in Serie A. Um, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.